So we're here at the Red Pill Expo outside Las Vegas, and we're with Rosa Corey. She is the uh, founder and leader of the Post Sustainability Institute, and she became world famous with her uh, Democrats Against UN Agenda 21. Rosa, thank you so much for being with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. So uh, your speech was tremendous. Tell us a little bit, uh, pretend like you're talking to somebody who doesn't know anything about this. Why should your average person be concerned about Agenda 21? Well, if you're at all concerned about your life and the way it's going and everything, your future, you're going to be concerned about Agenda 21 because it's, it's the, it's a, actually it's an insidious plan that doesn't really look like uh, what it is. So, um, because it's kind of, uh, a, I call it a stealth plan that's hiding in plain sight. So because of that, you really need to know what you're looking at. And it's a whole life plan. It affects every aspect of your life. So it could be education, it's the judicial system, it's uh, land use, it's energy, surveillance. If you're concerned about any of these issues, you're obviously definitely going to be concerned about United Nations Agenda 21 sustainable development. And so, hypothetically, let's say they get their way, let's say they succeed, what does the world look like under Agenda 21, under UN Sustainable Development? Well, I think what you can look at, you know, it's a, it's definitely an incremental plan. You know, the plan is you're not going to just go into world one world governance in a single jump. So if you want to take a look at something like the EU, where you've got 26 or 28 countries that are all under the thumb of Brussels, uh, you can take a look at situations where really the people have no voice. And of course, we feel like that a lot in the United States. We feel that we've lost our judicial system. We've lost our educational system or the system has taken us over and really that uh, that is a symptom of United Nations Agenda 21 sustainable development it what it does is it, it it's masquerading under the jargon you know things that look good to you like good like green like sustainable like bikeable walkable vibrant you know they've got all the great jargon terms and so um, people are conditioned to think it's a good thing but really sustainable development development is not about recycling. It's really about uh, creating the new man. It's about uh, creating the global citizen. And as I said in my talk, uh, basically a global crisis requires a global response and that justifies global governance. And that's what we're seeing now. So you're going to just see more and more of that. And the further away your government is from you, the less influence you have on it. So if, you know, we have representative governments such as it is, but it's it's only as bad as it, as it is because of us. You know, we are responsible for uh, the kind of government we have. But uh, under global governance, that's not government at all. It's control by unelected boards and Commission, so we will literally have no opportunity to have any impact on what happens to us. And that is extremely dangerous, and that is our future if we don't get up, stand up, and speak out and stop this plan. So, you know, one of my passions is education system. I think viewers know this pretty well. Uh, what is the role of education? I know Agenda 21's got Chapter 36 dealing with education. Where does education fit into this big picture of the UN's vision? You know what? Education is completely integral to this entire plan because globalization is the standardization of all systems. And you can't standardize a system, you can't control a system unless it's standardized. Because, you know, central control, you're in you enable uh, full control by um, by making everything standard, right? So you know you ho you uh, homogenize it, you harmonize it, and that way you're able to control it. So with education, of course, uh, you want to be able to control the entire populace, and you do that with uh, you know whatever you, you know your your educational system is imbued with sustainable development principles from pre-kindergarten to postgraduate school, and you literally have people who are totally indoctrinated into the concept that they're going to be a global citizen and I mean that is in everything I was in a hotel room in Houston and I picked up this little thing that was on the bed you know if you want your if you want your uh, sheets you don't want your sheets washed you know uh, put this on the bed you're a good global citizen <laughs> and I was like uh, excuse me <laughs> wash, <but> it twice. <laughs> <laughs> wash it twice yeah but I mean you know that's the thing too I mean I'm glad you said that because you know obviously we're not we are not people that want to destroy our 
planet mm -hmm. and use everything up and you know we're not like turning the tap on and just <laughs> leaving it on right you know so it's not that uh, sustainable development is why I, it's why I call my book behind the green mask because that is the green masks uh, you know the concern for the environment is simply uh, it's a it's a vehicle to make this one world governance system happen because you can't control the entire world unless you give the entire world something to be concerned about that crosses all borders and this is about destroying all borders destroying all old systems and the nation state is of course the system that they're really working on destroying now so Rose obviously this is an enormous problem I mean there's no person who could tackle all of this but your average person out there watching this, what, what are some of the effective things that they could do uh, without turning their lives upside down, preferably, to get involved in this fight? What is something really important that they ought to be getting involved in now? Yeah, well, you know, people always say to me, oh, is, it, is there anything we can do? It just seems so awful. You know, what could we possibly do to save ourselves? And I say, well, you know what? You're still alive. Nobody's holding a gun to your head yet. And you're aware of this. So awareness is the first step in the resistance. And you are the resistance. If you hear this, if you're listening to this, that's what you are. The resistance is not something you join, it's what you are. And so I'm sure everyone's very creative, but one of the things that you can do, of course, is to become more involved in your government. Showing up is really important. That's one thing. Educating yourself and others, and we've got flyers on our websites. You don't like my flyer? Make your own <laughs> flyers. Get up early in the morning, put them on doorsteps. You want to reach a lot of people directly, and this is a way to do it indiscriminately, right? And then you also, uh, you know, Get out of Facebook. Uh, you know, quit watching those stupid videos. You know, you want to watch the videos that educate you, like this one. Right. And um, you know, get involved. You know, be more connected. Talk to young people. Uh, I, you know, what I think is a great idea, and I wish someone would do this, is um, sponsor like a video, like a film festival. Two hundred and fifty dollar pro first prize. You know, smaller second prizes for children who make videos about United Nations agenda. 21 and the effect that it's having on their town and uh, and then give them a little education about it and set them loose and I and then you can have a film festival have an awards banquet so that's something you can do fund that you can uh, bring speakers to your town you like Rosa yes like <laughs> me yes unfortunately I do travel an awful <laughs> lot and um, you know there's so many things and on the back of my book you know not that I'm trying to sell it but in the back of my book I have 20 pages on what in you know what you could do and it's fun, you know, it's really fun to be engaged. You can anti-Delphi these government meetings and there's nothing more fun than that. It's totally empowering and you just feel, you know, so it's like political theater and it's fabulous and hey, this is what we're about. This is what Americans and pe all free people do is they take on the, uh, you know, their, their own government and they become their government. You may not get elected, but even if you just run, run for your, uh, you know, whatever the office is and you know not just run for political office but run for uh, you know run for the head of whatever group you're a member of and check out you know before you give money to your group uh, check out and or donate your time check out uh, put in the name of that group and sustainable development in your search browser and see what comes up and you're going to be shocked it's it's kind of it's not even what is agenda 21 it's almost what isn't, oh, yeah. and you're going to have to look long and hard yeah. to find something that isn't. Yeah, it's true. It, it has infected everything. Um, Rose, I really appreciate what you do. Where can people find out more about you, about your work? Where's the best place for people to get your book? What are some of the websites people can go to? Okay, great. Well, you know what? Uh, one quick thing you can do is just put my name, Rosa, and Agenda 21 into your search browser. It's gonna, you're going to get a ton of stuff still. They haven't blocked it all yet. Yet. And, <laughs> yet. and if you want to buy my book, you can, of course, get it on Amazon, Kindle Nook, and you can also buy it directly from us through our websites. There's a website behind the green mask.com and then also uh, please check out our websites uh, Democrats against UN agenda 21.com and we've got tons of information if you spent your time reading that you would know so much and a great blog on there if I do say so myself and uh, lots of information and the post sustainability Institute post sustainability Institute.org lots of great info fantastic Rosa Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it.